I grew up in the Berkshires of Western Massachusetts. Even though I'd mowed plenty of lawns and done plenty of caddying in the Depression, I only had $150 to go to college with. So that's what tipped the scale to Norwich, which was a full military college, and hence ROTC. I was called up under a Thompson Act, I think, which was a year of duty to get ready. Before the year was over, Pearl Harbor came. We had word, a simple word of prepare to move out. James Burt entered active service in 1941 and was promoted to captain by 1944. He commanded Company B of the 66th Armored in near continuous combat from the day the unit landed at Normandy until the end of the war. He spent time in North Africa, Sicily, and throughout Europe before arriving in Germany in late 1944 to assist beleaguered comrades at the troublesome Aachen Gap. Siegfried Line was busted except Aachen. Aachen held out and protected a supply corridor called the Aachen Gap. The German garrison of Dunkirk had been flushed by the Canadians and the British on our left. So they were retreating to Germany. I didn't know we were ahead of them. We made teams, a tank company attached to an infantry battalion. But the infantry had taken such a clobbering. By default, I took over the battalion. I had no one to confer with. For that little zone, I was the boss, that they call the battalion birch night. It was about eight days of street fight. We wouldn't try to take the whole street. We'd aim for a few houses. The enemy would probably be in the lower level. That was a no. So we'd protect the tanks, move them up, and have them shoot into the foundation wall. It was just analyzing what you knew, what was the situation. But, and it turned out to be the way to do it. So we used that technique on each of our house assaults. One day, looking across the gap, there was a hillside we could see. But American troops over there had captured the hillside and had the pillboxes. And we saw a counterattack coming on. It was uh, almost like watching a, a huge dimension movie, frantically on the radio. I said, there's no artillery coming. Let me fire on. We clobbered that whole hillside. I think we destroyed a battalion of enemies. We hadn't quite captured the gap yet. We were getting close. Another day, I was heading for the infantry CP, and there was a tremendous explosion. And I saw this object coming at me, and I figured it was a hunk of shell. I figured it was going to cut me in two. And I don't know whether it was two minutes, 20 minutes, or two hours later. I was alert, and I could see the upper half of me. And I said, gee, how can, how can I be alive and be alert? Then I felt movement in my feet. Well, I was in a great big hole and was buried from the waist down. I climbed out and went to the CP. As I approached it, there was a wounded body, and I dragged it in. I learned later it was the infantry battalion commander. The infantrymen all knew what I'd done, and having done that, that must have been what inspired them to uh, work for me and with me and cooperate so well when I, in effect, took them over. Realizing that he was the highest ranking officer left standing. Captain Burt took control of the entire operation, splitting time between infantry and artillery, inching his men forward through the gap. Eight days after the battle began, the Aachen Gap was finally closed. And the ordnance officer who brought the ammunition about towards the end, he said, Jim, your company and this engagement has used more light tank ammunition than in the combined entire history of the regiment. We, we fired a basic load a day, I think. In fact, the Berlin radio after that battle called us Roosevelt's butchers. Less than a year after his heroic one-week stand at Aachen, the war finally ended and Captain Burt returned home to receive the Medal of Honor. 
It was a lovely day in the garden behind the White House. I felt proud. I thought he was a good president. He said, if you ever have a problem, get in touch with me, direct. I was never afraid. In one way, your mind was too busy to include fear, too busy with what's happening the next minute, the next hour, and possibly tomorrow. And I guess if you let it take over, you go downhill as a person and go downhill as a leader. So the simplest and the best is just not having it.